Yup, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. We have Why Everyone Hates Jojo Siwa. Play with Jojo, you're gonna see why. <laughs> <laughs> one I, that that was a cold line that was taken out of like context for so many people who don't know uh don't understand hip hop but uh or certain cultures but to each his own um do you feel like a lot of people hate Je jojo honestly every time like these conversations come up i really don't be knowing what's going on Cause I'm not like. What nah, she... Have you seen Have you seen the latest video? I haven't. That's what I'm saying. I, I be out of the I be out of the loop, so I don't be knowing what's going on. I be like, oh, so I'm learning. Like that's a video this week that uh, I be meaning. I, to, I send you so much. If you have to send me things, cause I really don't be like. No, nah, I'm saying I be meaning to send you so much. Oh, but uh, I'm just saying. You, I'm saying the one that was shoot her with her dancing. Oh, she was dancing. Oh no. Hold on, let me see if it pulls up. Uh, like, are people like talking about it or something? Bro, it's it was cringe, bro. Oh, so yeah. you know, me Kanye had did the video. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was yeah, I didn't know that. There's a whole meme video going on right now. Okay, but yeah, Dang. was it this? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Damn, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up for y'all. Sorry. Watch it later. Uh, it's this right here. And then, because I, I, I don't want to play with. Is this her outfit? Yeah, it is. They did a whole routine. I said, it was so cringe, bro. Looking like a construction worker. Yes. Yeah, uh, sorry. I, I know this is very. Okay. It's just do Even <laughs> I'm so done. Honestly, but yeah, but anyway, you can show me later. But, but yeah. um, sorry. But with that being said, before we get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go. If you want the first part, you got to do it. Check out down below. Also, if you enjoyed today's visuals. Like it with a thumbs up. But if you want to see the video I'm, I'm referring to, it said JoJo Siwa shows Mario Lopez her new signature dance move. And it's so cringe, bro. Look, look. Here you go. Here. I don't know. I only re I have I, I I didn't play because possibly if I had music, I don't want to get uh, copyright. But uh, let's go. Let's hop into those. So let's see what Patrick CC got to talk about today, man. Let's go. One of the biggest challenges of the child star curse is transitioning from their youthful identity to adulthood while still appealing to and respecting their young fan base. Jojo Siwa has recently faced major backlash for her attempted switch from a bright-eyed, smiley, and colorful tween role model to a rebellious, edgy, and provocative pop star. But the animosity towards Jojo is understandable. That's gonna be another thing for her. How old is she? Before Patrick really get into it, how old? See, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm asking. You, you keep asking so much that I told you. Once so Jojo, Jojo is 21. I was gonna right. say 21. I She's 21. 21. So her fan, her, her following fan group is still probably ages... That looked up to her growing up is probably sixteen and down. Mm -hmm. The age is sixteen and down. Typically, people your age are not supporters of you. It's typically people younger. Yeah, yeah. Un unless you are adult and you came into as a double. Once you come into a child star, it's typically your age or uh, anybody younger than your your age group. Yeah. Uh. So with that being said, now she's transitioning to adulthood. Mm -hmm. And I know people are gonna be like, it ain't, it ain't on the celebrity, it's on the parents to raise the kids, right? Mm -hmm. But when you your whole career success has been based around kids supporting you and kids, you have honestly you have now have to be a role model. You have to. It's not. It might not be something you asking for, but you have to. And her going, her going through this phase of trying to figure herself out. 
and is all she wanted to wanted to also display it because she has to. That's the only way she's gonna continue to get paid and and make a living unless she got a lot of money saved up from when she was a child. Hopefully she does with the laws and stuff enforced. And so typically. A lot of child stars we grew up with, a lot of their parents wasted their money. So by the time they turned 18 and they have had to mature into that more mature roles, they had no money. So hopefully she has a lot of money saved due to the laws that have been placed for young young um, actors and celebrities and likeness. But I would just hope, I don't know how she's going to transition. But I know a lot of parents probably also don't agree with how she's going about doing it. You want to say something. You I'm, I'm thinking. Because this transition is obviously disingenuous. Today, I am going to break down exactly why Jojo Siwa's transition is failing miserably and prove that even she doesn't believe in her new bad girl persona. For Siwa's entire life, she was known as a positive, hardworking, and charismatic dancer who rose to fame through the hit Lifetime reality TV show, Dance Moms. Oh. Jojo used her youth fame to grow her YouTube channel and social media presence. And Did you know that she came through Dance Moms? I, I didn't. didn't know she was, yeah. I thought she came from YouTube. I literally thought she just came from YouTube. She blew up as a YouTuber. And transition to Nickelodeon. Did you used to watch Dance Moms? I used Hell to watch no. Dance Moms all the time. Why would I watch Dance Moms? Well, I mean, some people tuned in. Like, maybe your mom or sister watched it or something, and you probably was just there. I don't, I don't, no. You don't be there. No, I don't want no. <laughs> Nearly 13 years old, Siwa released her hit single, Boomerang, an upbeat song that addresses childhood bullying. The song would go on to earn a two times platinum certification and the music video has accumulated over 1 billion views. From there, the 14 year old signed to Nickelodeon, appearing in children's television shows like Bizarre Vark and The Thundermans, as well as various television specials and award shows. She became a modern Nickelodeon superstar, releasing various songs, TV shows, TV movies, and performing sold out concert tours in stadiums around the world. She even launched her own merchandise line of JoJo's Bows. The lucrative Smart. business venture reportedly sold more than 80 million bows from 2016 to 2020, equating to well over $400 million, according to Forbes. By the time she was 17, she was filthy rich and was a positive influence on her millions of young girl fans all around the world. Naturally, while entering adulthood, child stars start to think about how long they can or want to appeal to children. JoJo's more mature gigs were competing on Dancing with the Stars and becoming a judge on So You Think You Can Dance. But those mature audiences struggled to take her seriously as a judge. Even though she had over a decade of dance experience and was sporting a new adult-like pixie cut. Plus, being a judge on these dance shows is typically a job someone takes when they are past their prime. JoJo yes. is just 20 years old and believes she has much more to offer to the world. So it was time to make a drastic change to let the world know she is not a bright colored child star anymore. Do you think they should have went to, through the approach? And I'm gonna just use somebody as an example, not necessarily exactly, but like sister, sister. So the reason why I'm, I'm referencing them is they gave us the television show as as the while they were like teenage kids, right? Mm -hmm. But with their show, their show allowed them to mature to a more mature audience so their audience can mature with them. It wasn't just for kids, mm -hmm. but over time, even Moesha, we, yeah, saw, sure. we saw them go from middle school, high school, college. Yeah. I remember watching Sister, Sister, college age. So what you're saying even is Moesha, like with I, the audience, like them actually like growing. Grow with, with yeah. The, yeah, so you can continue to grow with her. Because I do feel like like now, like a lot of times, people can't separate the fact that the, a lot of these kids that came, you know, yeah. alone, they were kids, and now they are adults. So people can't, like, they still look at them as being that child star on TV. So the reason why I say it is because her audience, every, up until she was 18, was always kids. Mm -hmm. Then when she turned 18, she was like, hey, I want to be more mature. And y'all went and threw her right into a mature audience. Most of those mature audience that are tuning in with Dancing with the Stars, they don't want to watch you because their kids watch you. They're not going to automatically come into a connection. I don't care how old you are. Mm -hmm. I, I put you on for my kids, not for me. So you, there's a lapse of audience attention to that. I think she it would have been best to have her show her her growth through the shows. 
and have her mature so the audience can mature with her, which would have been a better transition, especially with her own, only being 21. She can still have a TV show that caters to those 16, 17 year olds, have her based off uh, like off Jojo go off to college or something just more because I think kids still need that because we had TV shows and stuff that uh, allowed us to grow with them. And we, we saw the aspect of, oh, bro, I can't wait till I get to uh get out of high school and go off to college because I want to live the college life that I see on TV. Like the Moesha, Moesha going to get in an uh, apartment or sister, sister staying in the dorms and you seeing that dorm lifestyle. Or even like this, we were young, but we were watching Living Single and we was like, I can't wait to, uh, I, I graduate high school, go off to college, get my degree. Then me and my friends move to the big city and get a, we had those shows. These kids nowadays, I don't think they had those shows outside of what, uh, Grownish. Mm. Ronish is probably one of the closest representation of a show like that, but that's an all American. But I don't know who, like, how many people really tune into those shows, though. You know what I'm saying? But I think Nickelodeon fails to appeal to that type of audience nowadays. But y'all used to do it, though. So why not now? True. More. Siwa's fans were suspicious of her transition while she began rolling out her newest single, Karma. In February of 2024, Jojo posted a photo of her wearing all black and seemingly tattooing her entire left arm. She also posted a video on TikTok showing those tattoos, which were fake, by the way. Shortly after, she posted a series of nine photos on Instagram, each with one word captions that, in order, read, See you in one month. Remember, Karma's a bit. Considering that everything wow. she had ever posted on Instagram was a 4K quality photo of her smiling and wearing bright colors, the grainy dim lit photos with one curse word in the caption was actually a drastic change. I think Jojo is in her fuck it era. It looks so illegal to see Jojo putting a curse word on her captions. She's in her Miley Cyrus era. I'm torn. My daughter likes rainbows and bows, Jojo, but I'm invested in this fuck it, Jojo. I want to know what's happening. The following week, she posted this celebratory video with the caption, my last week being a child star, but the official transition marks when she posted this warning video to TikTok. Warning, the following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers, may contain sexual themes, violence, strong language, dramatic scenarios, and flashing lights. Viewer discretion is advised. She would later explain the warning in a video that it was important to me to give that heads up and be like, look, if you follow along, that's all you. If you want to go, now's your time. This was JoJo's way of formally letting the parents of her young fans know that she is not the kid-friendly star anymore. A new era of life, we're becoming an adult! <laughs> How many kids are gonna pop out today? Nobody knew yet what was coming, but JoJo claims her transition would be shocking. That's been my massive, my most massive inspiration is no one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. And I am the first in the generation. It is very scary, but someone's got to do it. Now, I'm not really sure what counts as JoJo's generation, but... I, I was going to say, I feel like people have done that before, though. Did such a dramatic of a switch like that. And typically, it's all downhill from there. Like, what do you consider, like, dramatic or drastic or whatever? And I'm not just talking about drastic switch and change as far as the content that they put out, but lifestyle that they actually live. We've seen where people go from appeasing, appealing to young adults and then they go through this because they're trying to mentally change as well. And it's be too dramatic where we see a downfall. And we well, see I those think, I think and like, hers... Lindsay Lohan and... uh. I don't want to say Amanda because that, that could be yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. other stuff going, but even with all of them, it could be like even Orlando. Yeah, but I guess with hers, what her thing is kind of like soon. I I guess when she turned what nineteen twenty, I don't know when it, she started like actually. Sound like eighteen when she actually started making the change. When she was like. Basically, I'm doing this overnight. Soon I get into. I'm just saying yeah, it just yeah, seemed yeah. like it because again I don't keep up with her. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't either. I just see something go viral. 
Well, yeah, but anyway, I don't keep up with stuff, so yeah. I don't be like knowing what like what's going on. So I don't know exactly when she started to make the change and how fast it was. Yeah, but I, it, I think I'm conflicted in my head. Uh, like uh-huh. I, I really am. Like I'm conflicted with I get like because at the beginning you were saying like she has to be this role model for this audience that she's had when she was a child and she's now an adult, and so. I think I'm kind of like, I get where you're coming from, but then I also am like on the other end. So that's why I've just been sitting here thinking, like, for my final thoughts. I'm sure it's people that you watch growing up, you still look at them as like. I don't. And that's the thing. Like, when I. You have nobody that you like. You like. When I see people, I'm like, this girl is a. A grown a woman. Like, can we like we didn't we was always if people yeah. still seen us as kids, then yeah. like I know it's different because people are like, oh, we just like normal people, these mm-hmm. people we watch growing up on TV or whatever the case may be. So when I see the like comments like that, I'm like, we have to stop putting these people like keeping them as a, a 12 I, I'm I'm not old. saying I'm I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. That's I didn't say you said that. I said I, people are comments. I, can't, I, can't. I said that. Why are, you, why are you so aggressive? I'm not. She aggressive. said. She said. I'm not. That's aggressive. I'm not being aggressive. I didn't say you. I said people. Put your coming. hand down. I see that a lot. Put your hand down. I see. I, I see. Put my hands. Just, no. I that's see aggressive that a lot. Talk. You know what I'm saying? I see it a lot, and I'll be like, "This girl is not a, a 12 or 13 year old girl anymore. This girl is 22, 23. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah, we yeah, like yeah. stop? Like, like I can't. I I can't even take them. Like even when it comes to like the, I, you can't take somebody serious because you still look at them as a little child. I swear we have we have to stop. Like that's crazy to me. I, I but get what you say. I don't know. I don't know. But she was making some huge claims here. What could this extreme switch be? When she finally teased the intro of her song, the comments absolutely eviscerated her. When Jojo Siwa finally previewed her highly anticipated song, people in the comments were ruthless. It sounds like Spotify ads. Is this literally Lab Rats music? It sounds like Fortnite default emote music. This is Party Rock Anthem. The beginning of her song starts out with the lyrics, I was a bad girl, I did some bad things. And she also says that she was a wild child, which just led to more and more negative reactions in the comment sections. The song was most definitely viral before it even got released, but not because people were dying to hear it. It's because people were making fun of it. Yet Joe. I'm looking at something. East, but not because people were dying to hear it. It's because people were making fun of it. Yet JoJo claimed that something crazier was still going to happen. Everyone's been talking about the song, talking about the song, oh, this about the song, that about the song. No one's even questioned the music video yet. I'm about to start sharing some things with the music video. And that's where she gets real crazy. But then when she started sharing the music- I think the roll, I think the rollout just take, it's too much. Yeah, like, I, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's, and that's the thing. I'm kind of confused as to what she's doing or yeah. what she's trying to do. It's just too much in, so, behind a rollout of a of a music video. Yeah. And a song, like... Especially if, if the people not even gravitating to the song, what this video about to be about. That's I don't care. Saying. You you doing too much. I uh, often, you, often, I I'm going to just start dropping clips and dropping clips and hitting to this, hitting to that. Like, at this point, go ahead and drop the damn thing. We, we, we don't care. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like I I I do hate when people take too long to roll out something because by the time you drop it, all the suspense behind it is gone, and it's just like all right, you drop one or two things to hand towards you. Drop a little preview clip of the of the uh, of the a teaser trailer to the actual music video on your TikTok or something, or and drop a little snippet of the song. That's all we need. We don't yeah. need you every post you talk. Yeah, y'all just just wait. To, you know what I'm saying? You, overhyping it for no reason music video snippets i guess the craziness was supposed to be the sensual dancing or maybe this blades of glory inspired outfit or maybe the kiss inspired makeup or maybe that the setting is on the island above bikini bottom Adults looking at JoJo's imagery ironically look at this like a kid who's trying so hard to be an adult that it just makes her look even more like an uncomfortable kid. Some of the most respected people in the world have come up to me and been like, what you're doing right now is so right. It is so right. It is what the world needs. Like, I'm I'm, I'm learning from what you're doing right now. And that's crazy to me. I mean, I heard that from Lil Nas X yesterday. Heard it from Megan Trainor a few days ago. It, it 
<laughs> and these the most respected people in the world. <laughs> I hate when people say that. Like, what makes them more respected mm. than other than another individual? That's you know what I'm saying. Like, just because they got some kind of famous celebrity status, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hate when people say these are some of the most respected people. Like, your opinion don't matter because you ain't nobody gives a. F- yeah, you know, that's crazy. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. The support from people like that. But again, no matter how much she tried to build up hype, people couldn't be less enthusiastic about this release. And JoJo's attempts at being a badass just gave the internet more <laughs> fuel to make fun of her. Green guest on my podcast? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, let's spice things up. One of my exes. Oh? Finally, the song dropped on April 5th, which accompanied an interview where JoJo claims that she was doing something groundbreaking. There's never really been an influencer child star turned into musician adult star. She then went on to say that she believes this song is the first step in inventing a new genre. What would you call the genre? The genre is, I said it back in the day when I first signed with Columbia, I said I wanted to start a new genre of music. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, called gay pop <laughs> and they were like not only is the child star turned pop star extremely common but the song she released is structured exactly like any other dancey chanty power that is somebody who did it right ariana she has did it 100 percent right Most yo yeah. that is crazy <sighs> that is I think Miley's doing it right now. I think you know what I'm saying. Yeah, my, my Miley thing. went through a through a cringe phase that it was it was looking ugly out here. But also, I don't know what JoJo sound like like sonically, musically. I but just know. but just hearing her voice, her voice to me, her personal voice is like her talking voice. Yeah, it's annoying to me. So I don't know what her actual uh, vocal. Honestly, Ariana, this Ariana cat voice annoying than a mother. But that was her. That was just her as a character. But Ariana, she actually got talent. And sometimes, honestly, talent trumps everything. Yeah. True talent. True talent. Not just monetary talent. Because JoJo, I honestly have never never heard her music before. But crossing over from kids' music to real adult music, now you finna really get criticized. That child music, people gonna automatically hype it just because it's something good for the kids. Yeah. But when it's adults, it's talent. You gotta actually put out some some good. You're not just gonna get people to gonna. Oh, that's JoJo. We're gonna support because it's JoJo. Yeah. But the song she released is structured exactly like any other dancey, chanty, power chord driven pop song reminiscent of the likes of Lady Gaga, Kesha, mm. Carly Rae Jepsen, etc. Less than a week later, she corrected her statement telling TMZ that she definitely was not the inventor of the style, but rather wanted to be a piece in making it bigger than it already is. Walking back her comments was her first misstep. She hyped up this era like she was doing something generational. She should have just doubled down on her statement and been like, yeah, I invented gay pop. What are y'all going to do about it? We all agree it's a ludicrous statement, but she already said it, so now you got to stand on it. Don't be all like, oh no, this is what I actually meant. Badasses don't explain themselves. However, True. things got even worse for JoJo when TikTokers realized she didn't write the song. When analyzing the credits on Spotify, you will notice that Desmond Child, Timbaland, Antoinina Armato, and Tim James are credited as the writers, and Rock Mafia as the producers. Antoinina Armato is a well-respected songwriter who wrote hits like This Love by Maroon 5 and The Heart Wants What It Wants by Selena Gomez. Armato also wrote for Miley Cyrus during her Disney Channel era. Because of this, people suspected that the song was originally originally written for Miley's breakout moment into adulthood, and they also found this 2012 tweet that may have supported that theory. Big thanks to Timbaland and Rock Mafia for a great collaboration on hashtag karma's a bit. And then Miley responded and said, don't forget me, bitch. But Miley never released a song called Karma, and we don't even know if she ever recorded a demo for this song. We would later find out that Britt Smith, an artist basically nobody has ever heard of, was actually meant to release Karma back in 2012. Rock Mafia back in the day. It was supposed to be my first single. Things changed, and I went wow. with Provocative um, instead, and shouldn't have done that, really. We should have gone with Karma. That was my first choice, but label things got in the way, and I kind of 
was led um, in that direction. And we went with provocative and then I left the industry after that. Brit and Jojo's versions are almost exactly the same. The lyrics are word for word the same and the structure of the song is nearly one to one. But Brit's version is so much more dynamic. It is less power pop driven and feels more like a classic 90s slash early 2000s dance banger. Plus Brit is a better vocal performer. But once this information came to light, TikTok exploded with viral videos claiming Jojo stole this song. The narrative shifted from Jojo is cringe to Jojo is cringe and a thief. The craziest part of this whole situation is that I hate when people be like, she stole, somebody stole a song because somebody wrote, the, somebody, somebody wrote the, the song the, and gave him. A lot of people think they know the music industry and they fail to realize what the music industry is really is. Like, yeah. like if y'all really, like, I don't know, man, I, I have a, I have a degree in this, so that's the reason why like nothing is very alarming to me yeah, yeah. when I I well, really see, know it. Yeah. Half of the people who got that's an artist don't write their own music, especially when once you go outside the hip hop genre, it's not surprising who don't write their own music. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is just founded on you need to be able to write your own lyrics. Yeah. Everybody else, Beyonce, she got all these accolades, don't write her own music. Can she write a song? Probably so, but. What's the point of me putting all that effort and energy into writing a song with somebody? I could just go out here and perform the song and and let right. me work on the performance piece of it instead of working on the writing and performing. Let me put time into training my vocals. Even yeah. Rihanna, they are everybody, bro. Like, come on, like, you know how how many people have Tina Turner, yeah, yeah. legend, Ike was writing all them hits for her. The most majority of everybody that's famous do not write their own music. It's somebody tagging along that's, that really we don't look at or we don't credit writing all the hits. Neo, a major hit writer, really probably got a better career as a hit writer than he does doing his own music. Yeah, sure. The Dream came out, Charlie's a 10, and went right back in and writing 10s out. out. Seven? Oh, you talking about Seven Streeter? Mm -hmm. Try. Nobody really was jocking to her like they were jocking to her music that she, she was writing for other people. Her Man, game is... I know a lot of people who write songs yeah. for people in the industry. Yeah. They don't get no recognition when they put their music out, but y'all flock to the to the artists that they writing for. Yeah. Chris Brown, half of the music he not shitting on him, but a lot of music he has out here is written. And that's written fine. For him. I mean, yeah. So I don't. I don't. When it comes to like. Uh, different certain type of genres like R&B for yeah. instance or, or, what, pop. or pop yeah. or whatever the case may be like I don't understand like the like the hate behind like oh, oh you, 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 da, da. I'm like okay and like yeah, rock, even rock R music bro all of it like you said except I guess for hip hop people got like a different like like perception perception of it. when it comes to hip hop but any other genre Pim, they've been doing this Elvis Presley. Now, one, I don't know how, I don't now Elvis never used to steal. Oh, yeah, now, if, nah. if you want to go into talk about some stealing, yeah, no, he was, show yeah. this to your mama and grandparents. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Elvis ain't number a thief. Yeah, but I don't know. How they people, don't credit nobody. I don't know how people feel about country. I know people be right, yeah. but I don't know how y'all. You know, some people yeah. write their own country music. They now we it. go back to all them but, old rock and roll people, <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> If you really want to talk about it, let, let we can talk about some stealing of some music. But yeah, now they used to steal music. Nowadays, is is so it's I guess a that element. that part of it, okay. But I guess when people already have this hate towards you, yeah, anything yeah, yeah. you do, baby, they go yeah. criticize you for. Yeah is that Brit Smith got approval to release her version of the song <laughs> just one week after JoJo released hers. Fans oh, liked really? Brit's version so much it nearly outstreamed JoJo's, that's securing like 5 million streams and reaching numbers. Oh, that's the reason, you want, want me to tell the reason why it. hers probably got, because now it's probably listed as like a cover. Mm, maybe so. Because it, it, now it's not an official version, it's a cover version of JoJo's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would make sense. Okay, it's, a, it's business six on Spotify's viral 50 charts. Brit Smith's version also peaked at number eight on the US iTunes I pop chart, it, surpassing Siwa's which peaked at 89 and failed yeah. to reach the Billboard Hot 100. Mm. Brit Smith literally made a come up off people hating Jojo Siwa. Jojo previewed another unreleased song which was immediately labeled as stolen within hours of playing it for her fans. This next song is called Choose Your Fighter. <laughs>
TikTok users immediately remembered a different artist called Emmeline who previewed the exact same song in 2022. <laughs> Emily probably is yeah. a songwriter. Yeah. She's trying to, but she's trying to go viral. Yeah. A lot of people are nowadays trying to use TikTok mm -hmm. to push their actual career. And somebody probably told her behind the scenes, hey, it'd be better off just, just passing this pass off. Y'all know, I've, I've heard songs played before they even came out. And when they came out, it was like, I said, oh, I've heard that already. And it was a, a big artist. I'm just reading this. Uh, but that's all it is. She signed to. She's probably having a publishing deal, and her publisher was able to get her, uh, her song off to somebody else to cover, cause she'll make more money for JoJo actually doing the song than she will putting it out herself. She won't blow. You know what I'm saying? Cause she really probably don't have the backing and support and the fan base that would really make her song go. But JoJo does. So so your label, your manager, somebody will take your song, give it to JoJo. JoJo has a bigger following. So it, it's a better money move to just get a publishing deal. What? Well, I actually, like, but I was just going to say with that, like, is that something that that you have to? Because she said she didn't sign off on only coming out with JoJo. Is that something that she would have mm -hmm. to agree to? I didn't to? read this. My bad. That's why I was trying to get you to read that. She was like that she didn't sign off on it coming out with JoJo. Not her fault. If my version gets love, I can still put it out after hers. Thanks for the support. Is that something that she, if she wrote it, that would be something that she has to agree to, right? Who, who gave JoJo the... Unless she wrote it with other people too. Mm. So that's when, when it comes down to music business, that's when it, it kind of gets, it can go gray area because who, who, if, who I wrote it with you or were you just used as a performer to perform the song, somebody else wrote it, wrote it. Had you performed the song, you thought you was going to put it out, but they, now they have, that's, that's, that's the business yeah, side. I would have to be like, Hey, who has, who has the publishing rights to this? Then your publisher probably. Somebody right, signed. Right. Somebody signed somebody off. Somebody signed off. Somebody so who has some rights to it. I guess she was it. out of the know. Of, yeah. So yeah. And then she'll put hers out, as, as, and it'll be looked at as a cover, yeah. and she could do whatever she wanted with it. So, but she could have been just credited as somebody who supposed to been performing the song, and she thought it was gonna be her song, but it, they actually so. Mm -hmm. Man, you know how many even in hip hop, I heard people use the same. Zaytoven has done this, and I for sure have heard they told him he didn't had a beat produced for one artist and i heard the artist put it and then i listened to another artist i'm like that's the same beat yeah, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't that they were using that beat it was literally somebody has sold they sell, selling the beat selling to multiple beats, people yeah. and it's like hey whoever got the most money and that joins like the music, music industry is a very dark and shady industry though responded to the leak with this comment i actually didn't sign off on it coming out with jojo not her fault if my version gets love i can still put it out after hers it's unclear what emmeline meant by this and she didn't end up explaining it further but because like i would say uh, to you it's all about it's not what you say but how you say it i can put it out after hers like so that's somebody tell oh. somebody's basically telling her like like you know what I'm saying? That's some contract stuff. I can. It's not her fault, but I can put yeah. it out after she does. Like the, I can't like, official like put it out, girl. but I can. Yeah. Yeah. But then Siwa finally responded to the comments of her allegedly stealing her songs. The background on Karma, honestly, it's an old song. I was pitched it. I loved exactly. it. Was obsessed with it, so I, I grasped onto it. Why not that instead of a new song? No, there's. That's a very normal thing. A lot of songs. It's a normal are, thing. Are, are, yeah. Okay. What happens Amazing. is people write songs and then they just don't do anything with them, and then a few years later it makes more sense for another artist. You know? Did you steal it from Brit Smith? I did not steal anything. <laughs> she probably there's never no heard it. Thing from is her. No, I've seen the thing about um, uh, the one uh, Choose Your Fighter, one of my other songs. But no, that's the same situation. Somebody else did write it. I did not write the song. And then, you got the rights to it. But I have the rights to it. JoJo did not steal these songs. It is common for artists to not write their own music and have music that other people wrote pitched to them. Most of the time, songwriters make a batch of songs and send them out to multiple artists. And whoever is the first to buy the rights and release the song publicly is the legal owner of that song. 99% mm -hmm. of your favorite artists have worked with songwriters. The one caveat to this is that JoJo's preview of her Choose Your Fighter song was not even her voice. 
So she didn't record her version of it oh, yet and previewed it thinking nobody crazy. would realize it isn't her singing. Now that's weird. That's weird behavior. <laughs> when she had uh, let her audience hear, because I was like, oh, that's what she sound like. I want to have, I want to, yeah. you know, yeah. with her little raspy voice now, yeah. deeper rest. I was like, that. I was like, it really put some auto tune on it. That's so, what so I was who is the performer head. of the song? Is it the Emily chick? They pitch you to, with her, but even and then her, they'll, and what they'll do is on the official track, they'll tone down her vocals, put JoJo vocals on top, but you will hear an undertone vocal, and it'll be the original track. So it's music industry yeah. BS, bro. But JoJo is being way it's too open lot. about her lack of songwriting. She is cosplaying the bad girl while trying to explain, no, 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 you guys don't understand how the industry works. I'm not a songwriter. I'm just a performer. When has any major pop artist ever explained exactly how they don't write their music? It ruins the aura, the mystique of being an artist. How is anyone yeah, supposed to connect with your lyrics and brand after you blatantly said you don't write your words? My like, we know that you and every other pop star in history don't write their own songs but don't say it and you can tell even she knows she shouldn't talk about it because listen to her stutter and hesitate to speak on her writers in this interview honestly i i, I wrote this rap song called the lies sound better sure. i told my i told my uh, writer i was like look faster than Busta Rhymes. I was like, challenge me. But the main reason why nobody is taking her seriously is because she is trying to push this bad girl era, but everything she does just proves that this persona is not genuine. Firstly, let's just get this out of the way. The Kiss-inspired makeup has to be the least authentic thing any Fact, rebellious person would ever do. Then again, it's perfectly fitting because Kiss was basically a glorified children's band. Their music was considered That's badass right. and rebellious if you were ages 8 to 13 in 19. 75, which are likely the ages of people that currently I didn't I did not know that. I thought kids was for old folks. Older <laughs> like an older crowd. I ain't no kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause the, all the ah, and stuff like that. I didn't think kids was into, you know. I remember kids like <laughs> one dude you stick up. No think Jojo Siwa is badass and serving rock star looks. Jojo expressed that her goal was for her bad girl moment to be reminiscent of Miley Cyrus's bangers moment. When I was eight is when Miley had her bangers moment. And I was like, all I want is to have that one day. Like, I want that. And honestly, since I was like 15, like my whole like inner circle has been like talking about it and like getting excited for it. Jojo even copies Miley's signature tongue out pose, which if you can believe it was controversial in 2013. And yeah, Miley is definitely a legend, but it's important for Jojo to recognize that Miley, Miley was talent, actually though. bad. Like Miley was smoking salvia out of bongs, twerking on Robin Thicke at the MTV VMAs, wearing basically no clothing for all her public appearances in 2013. She was taking extreme risks and got so much backlash for it. The fans, the media, and other celebrities called her trashy, a stripper, pathetic, every horrible name to rebuke her antics. And Miley did not care to explain herself nor satisfy anyone. True. She just kept doing her thing because she felt so trapped behind the child star brand for years. Miley constantly detailed in interviews how she resented the Hannah Montana character. She hated wearing the wig. She hated doing the press. She felt like a fraud to her young fan base. Miley was trying to do whatever she could to escape the Disney image even if it meant losing her young fans and the financial benefits that came with it. She even had a multi-million dollar merchandising deal with Walmart in the works that she lost due to her antics, and she did not care. You could say in hindsight that what she was doing was trashy, but it was at least authentic. It seems like Jojo is talking up this transition more than fully diving in. Even the tattoos on her arm were fake. Well, most of them were. Just furthering the idea that she is half committed. She seems half committed because maybe she doesn't want to lose all her previous fans that made her a multi-millionaire. Remember, she sold $400 million in bows. Maybe she thinks she will be able to draw on her face, do a promiscuous dance, and sell $400 million in records. But music is way different than TV or even dance. It's not even about talent. It's about depth, lifestyle, attitude, parasocial connections through lyrics and mystique, all of which are extremely difficult to fake, and people know JoJo is not actually a badass. Like, look at this video of what she claims is a reckless or unhinged statement. The last few weeks, the internet has definitely made me feel like a psychopath. I realized something. I am a psychopath. And this is some shit that only I 
what you're doing. She really thinks calling herself a psychopath is some rock star. She already refers to her music video as iconic. Jojo seems to lack the understanding that she doesn't get to declare herself as badass and iconic. Other people have to do that for her. It's like declaring yourself a legend or putting yourself in the Hall of Fame. You don't get to do that. Other people determine your public perception. It's like she wants the credit before ever putting in the work. Plus, she has the money, time, and resources to actually put in the work. Put in the 10,000 hours to grow and change into the artist that she claims she can be. Like I said, I will never ever claim to be a singer. Yeah. But I will claim to be an artist. Okay. I am giving the world art and they might not like it. They might hate it, but they're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And it's become a bit of a guilty pleasure for everyone. But she likely has agents, managers. Just go back to that, that uh, <laughs> what I just said. Was was the more and more I hear, I'm like, hey, bro, bro, they have a point in the comment. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just. She's in my... always been a performer to me. Go ahead. No, go, go, go. No, go no, I was just gonna say, I'm just kind of like in my head, like, kind of like, like constructing this plan for her oh, of for how real? I would have went about. Not, not like I don't have it oh, to a T, okay. but I'm like of how I would have went about of transitioning her career because I feel like she's going about it whoever's behind her Spiral whatever downfall. it's going like like it's she's doing it all wrong you know what I'm saying and I understand you're looking up to like Miley or whatever yeah. but like Patrick said earlier if you're going to be you know you got to fully commit you got to gotta it. fully commit to it you feel what I'm saying no explanation just do it and do it wholeheartedly yeah like if whatever like if so if the fans saying something or the media whatever no explanation. Like this is who, this is what it is. This is who I am, and you could tell that it's not authentic. You could tell mm. she's uncomfortable. Mm. You could tell she's conflicted with where how she needs to go about her doing it, or if she wants to commit to being a badass, or if she wants to commit to being you know the child you know still yeah. catering to her the the um, child audience. She, or she whatever. still wants that audience. And she still wants. She's that. afraid she to wants lose to it. grow, but she's afraid to lose it, and she's like in the middle. Like yeah. I, I don't know, and I'm just like, dang, I would have like because like behind. Her. I'm just like, I don't know. But like, like Pat said, for you to 100% transition to work, like where you, what you talk about doing and what yeah. you talk about going to, you have to 100% lose that audience. You yeah. have to 100% say, you I don't give a two I don't care. About, about that. Not that, that image. I don't care about the. the, the yeah, you do. The, no, no, no. Not, not the not audience, but just, the image. Just that image. Yeah. Not that she don't care about the audience that, you know, have been supporting her thus mm -hmm. far. But if yeah, you true. really want to get out of that realm of like, you have to be like, I don't care. I don't care to lose that audience. I want to be who care. I am. Because they, they're, they're, they're going to grow up and become older. Like, yeah. if they really mess with you, they're going to follow you regardless. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. It's sad, though. And yes men saying, no, you can do this. You can be whatever you want. Yeah, wrap your Lamborghini Urus with PNG cutouts of your face. That's what all 20 year olds wish they could do. But easily the one thing she did that diminished all her credibility during this transition is straight up admit that she was never bad. I got pitched this song, Karma. And it's the first word is, I was a bad girl. And I was like, oh, it's a good song. I was like, but I can't say that. I can't say I'm a bad girl. I'm not. What? I'm not. I was 18, fresh off of my dream, the tour. And I was like, I can't say. I, I, I sang, every girl's a super girl last week. Like, I can't <laughs> sing I was a bad girl this week. It doesn't work. How is anyone supposed to believe in your new image oh, when you don't even believe in it yourself? Facts. Oh, that's bad. Facts, facts, facts. That's bad. She shouldn't over. She needs to learn how to also... <sighs> She talks too much. That's what I was just about to say, and I'm finna say that's the problem with this generation. They don't understand. They don't. They haven't came across the the notion of less is more. Sometimes. <laughs> less is more. Like I like sometimes like they, I like the mysterious. Open. Like I like a, like some people that are like mysterious. Like yeah. leave like things like. You know, to the imagine, I don't have to know everything. I don't have to know what you talk. I don't have to know any of that. And in these interviews, learn to like. Mm. Know how no to comment. like no comment or learn how to like answer things without saying too much or giving things away or because this generation especially the social bad light. not not saying this generation as far as like Gen Z or anything I'm saying yeah, like this, this generation of social media this era that we're yeah. in yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants everybody to be so open to the point where there's no mystique mm -hmm. about it. Like there's no 
lead, lead to your own imagination or your own desire to know, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like if you're not open to everything or telling everything, it's kind of like you're hiding or yeah. you're like putting on this fake persona. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just so weird. It's very weird. But yeah. It's a weird time we're living in, yeah. man. So, uh, I, I will always say, especially when somebody like JoJo, uh, it's better to kind of kind of understand it and look at look at it when she hit twenty five. Yeah, at twenty five, I can get a give a definite perception of what is what is to come and how she was able to transition. Right now, yeah, right, I think yeah. it's too early yeah. to say. But at twenty five, I think we can go. If, not to use the word judge, but for the lack of term judge, we can then be able to judge her career better. Yeah. Then. But right now, I don't want to use the judge word because I don't think you should even judge it. But to have a better perception and outlook of it, at, I think by the age 25 for her mm-hmm. would be a good time to like, let's see how things turned out for her. Yeah. Right now, it's too early. But hey, y'all spend us up. Y'all let us know y'all thoughts about it for us in the comment section down below. But until next time, y'all know how it go, man. I do go by the name DJ New Kid. This is We Are. We Are. Go and get it. Ain't no time to kick it. Got a stack of flip for my folks. Dollar, 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 dollar. Please tell me you can hear me. Don't turn your back and don't neglect me. Just let me know if you need me. Dollar, 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 dollar.